In this video we're going to talk about endometriosis, a uh, very common uh, condition, uh, OBGYN condition. Uh, well, what is endometriosis? Um, by definition, it's basically a non-cancerous disorder in which uh, the tissue that normally exists in the endometrium, which uh, is the lining of the uterus, this tissue is found in ectopic places. Uh, well, there's a lot of places that it can be found, uh, but we're going to uh, talk uh, mostly about the uh, the uh, structure that is limited to the uh, area of the pelvic uh, region. So when this endometrial tissue is found in ectopic places, in the ovaries, um, it can be found in the ligaments of that pelvic area. Uh, it can be found in the posterior cul-de-sac. There's a long list of places, and I think it's 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 good to get a visual picture of what what exactly is happening before we get into this whole talk. So let's show you a little picture here. So we all know what this is. This is a uh, nice diagram of the female reproductive uh, organs. The area I want you to look at here is the, this area right here. This area right here is the endometrium and it's the inside of the uterus and there's tissue here. And when it's it's currently this green area is the normal location. Now look at this right here, endometriosis. What's happened is this tissue that I've colored in green uh, has found its way into ectopic areas, areas where it's not supposed to be. In this diagram, they've really just shown a few areas. They've shown the ovary, uh, and they've shown the, the outside of the fallopian tubes uh, right here. Uh, actually, that's one. that one's on the outside. This one looks like it's on the inside. So uh, this diagram illustrates what exactly is happening. Now, keep in mind that endometriosis these uh, implants or these ectopic uh, tissues uh, that are you know I'm circling they can be found in a lot of places and there's a nice ligament there uh, this is a ligament um, it's not just these places but that's the fundamental aspect of endometriosis that this endometrial tissue has somehow found its way in ectopic areas and that causes problems so let's go back and c continue so how does this happen? What is the etiology? Well, there's two theories, okay? The first theory of why this is happening is a theory that involves retrograde menstruation. And what that means is during menstrual flow, um, the lining of the, uh, go back to our diagram here, so normal menstrual flow, uh, as you all know, you know, it goes this way, but retrograde menstrual menstruation would be you know the opposite way. Once the blood flows in the opposite way it can carry with it some of this endometrial tissue and that can end up in these ectopic places. So retrograde menstruation that's one theory, one accepted hypothesis not just theory. The other uh, accepted hypothesis is something called metaplasia and most of you remember it. Metaplasia just uh, talking is talking about when a cell it goes from one type to another. So in, in our example, we're talking about uh, a type of epithelium called solomic epithelium met under a process of metaplasia will transform to endometrium like glands um, in that location. So that's, that's two accepted hypotheses of why this happens. Now um, let's talk about, uh, before I get into the symptoms, I just want to mention, going back to that diagram, that these uh, ectopic uh, pieces of endometrial tissue have something called estrogen and progesterone receptors. And that's important because those receptors can grow, can, well, can allow these pieces of tissue to grow uh, when there's changes in hormone levels and that can present a huge problem and we'll talk about how that can be managed. Alright, estrogen progesterone receptors exist on those 
ectopic pieces of endometrial tissue. Now let's get into the symptoms. So what are the symptoms of endometriosis? Well, you have pelvic pain. You can have uh, infertility. That's a big one, actually. Infertility is a, a huge problem. Dysmenorrhea. This is pain during menstrual uh, flow. And dyspareunia. This is pain during sexual intercourse. Um, these together, if they happen together, pretty diagnostic symptoms of endometriosis. But the diagnosis is really done by something called laparoscopy. You really have to do this laparoscopy to visualize ectopic tissue. And then once you visualize it, you can take a sample and send it for a biopsy. What do they look like? Well, there's this, um, there's this term, it's called powder burn lesions. Powder burn lesions. You'll, you'll see this on the licensing exams a lot. And what they're really describing are these purplish uh, brown spots um, that I guess resemble powder burns. And that's what you will see uh, during the laparoscopy. And then when you do the biopsy, the, the lab will basically be able to tell you that this tissue is in, in fact endometrial tissue. And then finally, let's get into the treatment. Well, the treatment of endometriosis, uh, there's, there's certain stages, I guess, in terms of severity of treatment. The first is, you know, you just manage it if, with NSAIDs, you know, like naproxen or you know, Aleve or uh, ibuprofen, you know, just for mild discomfort. But really what the main treatment of the actual endometriosis medically is something called a GNRH agonist, okay? If you remember from your pharmacology days, the medication that we we're talking about is Luprolide. In North America, there's a brand name called Lupron. Uh, Lupron. And what does this drug do? It actually suppresses estrogen production. And if you remember earlier, I talked that estrogen progesterone actually uh, make these pieces of endometrial tissue uh, grow in the ectopic areas, and that can make the problem worse. Well, this actually suppresses the estrogen. So it prevents the uh, ectopic uh, tissue from growing. Now, the, the next part of the treatment really is you need to uh, excise or remove those lesions. Um, excise or remove uh, those lesions. And this can be done in a variety of ways. It can be done with a laser or, or you can just excise them. Um, and that's this third option here is done if you want to preserve fertility. Preserve fertility. Meaning the, the woman still wants to have children. But if the woman is done, you know, she's completed her childbearing, then what's the option? Well, I'm sure you can figure it out hysterectomy just take it all out because she's done with having children she doesn't need to have those pelvic organs anymore so this is a, um, a quick summary of endometriosis